Hello everyone, this is Jeffrey G27 and welcome to the video. If you guys checked out my uh, community post on YouTube this morning, uh, today's episode is going to be the Volkswagen Beetle engine swap with a recipe of the green ring casserole dish. Um, had a little help with it. I'm going to show you guys the set by set process for both the casserole and with the car. Um, I'm going to first show you the car and then I'll step into the casserole dish. Um, so to find this car, it is at the used car dealership. You'll find it right below the Mazda Miata. Uh, very affordable, less than 30,000 credits. Uh, we can look at the stats. Harley has 33 horsepower, so it's pretty slow. Uh, but this engine swap is going to help a whole lot uh, with this car, with its performance. Um, so now we're going to quickly go to the car maintenance service there is the engine swap at the very bottom only costing us 226,000 credits um, that's the engine model if you guys do want to quickly pause the video just to check and see if you have that particular engine in your uh, uh, tuning part you can now what I mean by that if you're new to the game um, if you go to the car menu, if you select tuning parts, which is the box icon with the tape over it, this particular menu shows you all the parts you have for all your cars. So the car specific, the car specific parts, I'm going to use this Lamborghini for example. So if you guys have like some reward from a four star or five star or parts or that ticket, that's basically what it is. It can get you some free parts. It could either range from a stage 5 part or it could be something you can get from GT Auto. Uh, and then the engines is always going to be at the very top. So this is all the engine models. Uh, that's why I said, say if you guys have the engine, go check it out. So if you're new to, to the game, that's where you find the engine and all the parts uh, for your particular cars. So as you can see, it's a huge buff. Uh, for this particular car and actually this car actually might be pretty good to use uh, in that one hour endurance um, race with all the old retro cars. I might be wrong um, because there's a certain criteria you have to meet for both the performance points and for the horsepower so I could be wrong on that um, but after installing the engine I'm also going to add wide body which surprisingly decreases the point value just a little bit. And that's pretty much the first step done uh, with the car. Alright, after this I'll quickly show you guys now the green bean casserole dish. Uh, simple recipe, you only need three cans of French style green beans, two cans of cream style of chicken, and the French onions of course. Uh, you want to wash the cans, making sure they're clean uh, before you do open them. Just a little wet washcloth. After that, you're going to use your can opener and you're going to drain the juices from the green beans as much as you can. Get a big bowl and dump the green beans inside the bowl. And then you're going to quickly also dump the cream of chicken with the green beans. You're going to save your second can of green beans and pretty much fill with milk 2% or full vitamin milk, about 80%, 90% uh, full. And then after that, you're going to stir. Um, after doing a couple of rounds of stirring, putting some low pressure, it should look, look like this. And after that's done, um, you're going to add about two cups of French onions and the satisfying thing is you're going to dump all of that into this bowl. After doing that you're going to stir it all together. It should look, look like this. And after that you should be able to dump all of it inside of a casserole dish. Making sure everything is nice and straight and it's not hanging from the glass or else it'll burn. And then just for a little extra flavoring we're going to put some ground pepper, some ground black pepper. 
uh, in just a little bit. You're going to heat the oven around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And the first round of cooking it, you're going to put 25 minutes. After that, once it's done cooking, the next stage is you're going to add just a little bit more French onions on the casserole dish. Having a little help from mom as she adds just a little bit uh, to it. And then once you get that done, you're going to then heat it up for six minutes, same temperature. And here's the finishing result. Looks really good. Alright. So now back to the racing video. If you guys do follow me in the game, my name is Jeffrey G97YT. Here's the livery that I'll be using. Uh, I will be using the famous Herbie uh, paint job from the 2004. I'm pretty sure it's made from Disney. Um, Herbie Unloaded uh, paint job. So this car breaks a lot of memories. <laughs> uh, can't believe that movie was made back in 2004. It's literally 19 years old. I can't believe it. Anyway, this is look at the paint job. This is of course the livery that was used in that famous California Auto Club uh, raceway. Uh, if you guys see the movie, I haven't seen the movie. I'd really recommend watching it. It's really good. So, if you guys are curious what the parts consist of for delivery, just in case if you want to have the same parts. The front is standard. Uh, here's also what the other types are uh, for the front. I don't know why that's for type B. I don't really know why that's there. Uh, for the rear, uh, you're going to use type A, which essentially is basically removing the chrome part on the rear bumper. The wing is type A. And for the rims, if you guys are curious, it is American Racing 8R61s, uh, 16 in diameter, and they're both wide for both the offset and for the width. Okay, so here's the setup for the car. So here's the new engine in the green font. Uh, we'll be using, uh, for this episode, uh, the wheels is going to be sport mediums for this particular race. Suspension is going to be normal. Uh, we have the differential fully customized. I'm going to have it 5560. Uh, for downforce, the rear is supposed to be 88. Uh, the ECU is going to be about 96. Uh, ballast, uh, 200. And we're going to have it at negative 34. Uh, fully customized racing transmission, set it to 180. Uh, for the intake and exhaust, everything for it is going to be racing. And for the brake system, brake pads, it's going to also be racing as well. The brake brakes are actually what brings it up a lot. And then for clutch and flywheel, it's going to be racing. And everything you see on the screen as it's installed is what you'll also need for this particular setup. Uh, to show you guys now the car and what it can do. This car feels very smooth, uh, but just to be warned, at some points it is going to be a little bit on the loose side, um, on the rear. Uh, that's why I kind of wanted the weight ratio to be 50-50. Uh, this is a rear engine, also a rear drive uh, drivetrain. So, essentially the front of the car, if you guys don't know, that's basically the trunk and in some points you will have your car to either raise up or sink down depending if you're going back to throttle or braking uh, just keep that in mind and then when you do brake uh, I really recommend just try to make sure the car is straight as possible or else it's going to pretty much going to uh, make the car a little bit upset uh, balance wise it's going to be um, when it breaks, it's going to also be a little bit out of control. But despite that, 
Uh, this car actually does have some decently good handling um, and also has some pretty decent top speed too um, as you see right here. So we survived the first lap uh, all the way to P5. We're now about to pass the RX in fourth place and we're also going to cha charge uh, and possibly pass the Supra for P3. So pretty good start uh, with the Beetle. Well, the racing brakes are on break right to 200 sign. Um, what I do recommend doing is for your first turn, uh, basically to keep it in third gear, you could do second gear, um, but I think third gear the car actually feels a little bit better. Uh, plus, it gives you that little bit extra uh, chance to save a little bit more tire wear uh, for the rear wheels. So, as you guys can see, how smooth the car is, it's just glued to the white paint. And to this part right here, we're going to break a little bit. To get back to that throttle. Get, got a little upset there. Uh, we'll be back to third gear. Got the throttle a little bit as we hit the wall, the left rear. Um, Shift to fourth quickly. Stay in fourth gear. And just trying to basically let the car coast some. And just try to use a, the right mount brakes and right mount throttle and turns. We are going to try to make a move on the GTR, but unfortunately, it shuts the door on us. So we're going to try to do it uh, coming to the double right tight turn. But this car is very smooth through the safe district. Um, has a very satisfying gliding uh, feel to it uh, since it's a very lightweight car. We're going to brake right at the double right hand turn. The GTR is going to go a little bit higher, stay off the curb. And we'll take the advantage and be able to pass it. Uh, what I do recommend is changing the third quickly. We kind of did mess up that turn at the end, so we have to fall back to P3. Uh, but thankfully, since we have pretty decent straight line speed, we're going to follow the GTR, get some slipstream from the GTR and we'll be able to pass it right at the beginning of lap 3. So up to P2 now. Now unfortunately it will take us to lap 5 when the Honda goes to pit to take the lead. Uh, this is lap 7. This is the lap that I was able to pit. Um, as you can see we have plenty of fuel uh, for the car. Uh, the reason why I was at pit is of course you can tell is the rear tires just basically are practically gone. Um, the car does have some decent pace. Uh, we did some 212s. 12, uh, I messed up and did a 213 on lap 5. But we're looking mid-high 212s. Um, was I was able to do before I pit. Gonna come to pits and switch to sport hards. And just add enough fuel just to last me the rest of the race. Um, I don't need all the fuel uh, just to save me some time also to kind of keep the car weight a little bit lower uh, just to have that little extra speed as well all right gonna fast forward now to lap 10 as we just did a 210.8 uh, across the line uh, Gallo has the fastest lap he comes in for his final pit stop so I'm going to show you guys a hot lap through Tokyo uh, using the Beetle with the Porsche engine. So you're going to break a 200 meter sign, uh, third gear through here, and then eventually go back down to second. Getting slowly back to the throttle, we're going to stay in second gear through this part of the track, break, turn, and then back to the throttle. And then right through here, you should be at the fourth gear before you do hit the bridge. You're going to break a little bit, let it coast, and get back to the throttle middle apex of this turn. Then we're going to brake, let it some more, and then back to the throttle after halfway the apex. After you hit past the 100 meter sign, you're going to brake, go down to third, and get back to the full throttle. Right through here, you should stay in third gear, brake underneath the bridge, and then just coast, and then half the apex, get back to the throttle. After you pass the 100 meter sign, brake again, then hit be half throttle to full throttle. And up to the exit ramp, stay in third, brake, just let the car ride through the corner naturally, then back to the throttle. 
break coast, and then middle apex, you're going to go back to full throttle. And then for the tricky double right hand turn, uh, pretty simple. This car actually does pretty well in this turn. You're going to break at the 200 meter sign, and you're going to go all the way to first gear. Uh, then you're going to short shift to second gear how, when the rift limiter is halfway, and then you're going back to third. Full throttle uh, through this rest of the track, and that's basically it's a hot lap guide uh, through Tokyo Expressway. So unfortunately, we're we were not able to beat Gallo's fastest lap time, but this time it's still quick. It's going to be a 210.842 uh, to cross the finish line. Uh, this is going to be a pretty much of a slow run, uh, considering for the engine swaps. It's going to be a 27.02. Uh, for the overall race, so at least it's quicker than my uh, F1500 TA with the Jordan Michael Schumacher livery. So 2702 is the total time for the race. Uh, Gallo had the fastest stop at 210.4, we had 210.8, and thankfully, with that little chef contact, we were able to keep the cleanest bonus, which is always nice. But that's basically it for Tokyo with the uh, engine swap for the bugs. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you guys want to check out my last video that I did hit with the F1500 TA with the Jordan Michael Schumacher livery, there it is right there. You can click on that. Check out that race. Um, hope you guys enjoyed what you saw today. Hope this video has been a help. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, don't you subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. That way you can guys check out my community when it drops. So those are my videos. Hope you guys have a good rest of the day. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.